I'm back for my follow-up video for part two of making this amazing roof. <laughs> It's a freezing cold, frosty day in Colorado, but I've got no concerns, completely waterproof now. At the beginning, I had some issues with the roof. It had a little bit of leaks in the back because I just used regular silicone and it doesn't stick well to acrylic. And also just with the time, the moisture and the sunlight, it break down. But I switched to all marine grade adhesives and sealants. And ever since doing that, I've had no issues. It can expand and contract with the heating and cooling of the acrylic, but still it keeps the seal. I have no issues. I love it. It's beautiful. I love it when it snows or when it's raining now. Before I was concerned, now I'm really happy with it. Everything turned out well. So here's part two, and then I'll have a full tour video coming up, as well as some other cool videos coming soon. I'm done with firefighting for the year, so now I can focus on you guys. I still got a little bit of things to do inside, mostly cosmetic things finishing up, but it's all done. Right now it looks like this because it's all frosty on the outside right now. But the sun's about to come up and warm this whole place up. Just let in a bunch of natural, I mean, it already left in a bunch of natural light, but it just helps warm this whole place up a lot. So we finished the last video with the van almost ready for the acrylic roof. I got a couple of small things I gotta do first. I'm gonna start insulating and I gotta do a little bit more of the support structure. And once that's all done, I can begin the acrylic roof placing and sealing process. So the piece of acrylic is four by eight, which is the same as plywood. So instead of risking damaging it and trying to lift it all the way up here, I'm just using plywood to get all the sizing correct. This is what it's gonna be attached to or partially attached to. I'm just gonna size it right, and then once everything's in place, I'll switch the plywood out for the actual acrylic. So before I waterproof everything and assemble it, I just wanted to show you guys exactly how this is all fitting together. So the plexi is gonna fit in these grooves here. Once that's in, these guys are going to slide right over it and be attached on there, kind of trapping it in there. Same on that side, and in the back we'll have supports holding it back here. But the reason I'm doing this is I'm leaving the plexi about a fourth of an inch away from this so it has room to expand and contract on top of here. Because plexi will do that, and I don't want it cracking or getting damaged when I do that. And then up here in the front, similar thing, plexi goes all the way up to that front. And this guy slides right over and traps it all in place. And um, the reason I did it like this is at first I was going to bolt it with some fancy rubber uh, bolts and stuff. But bolts and holes just create weaknesses. And I was just scared it's going to crack on that bolt. So by doing it like this, um, there's no bolt, no point of weakness. It's all kind of just grabbed and stuck in there real good. And I'm using plywood because plywood's less likely to warp than regular wood and it's lighter, but I'll be waterproofing it very heavily. And if something goes wrong, plywood makes it really easy just to fix it. That's why I kind of love wood, because if anything ever breaks, I can just fix it real easy on the side of the street. So one thing with plywood, especially cheap plywood that you buy from like Home Depot and Lowe's, you're gonna have holes like this. And before you waterproof plywood, you're gonna wanna fill those holes up just because just painting it won't. Uh, fill these holes in and it'll allow water to seep in and start degrading it from the inside So make sure you fill those up and then paint it So just in case anyone's wondering, it's a four foot by eight foot uh, Three eighths inch thickness cell cast acrylics made by Acrostar and now there's no turning back now. Oh Oh man, don't be difficult on me. So today's the day the plexiglass is going on the roof um, I've been kind of putting it off because I'm afraid I'm going to break it when I install it. But my wife is going to help me. She's the one that helped me with the first camper van. And then we sold that camper van and lived on a beach in Thailand for a while. And that's what I proposed to her. But anyway, before she goes to work, she's going to help me put that acrylics on. And hopefully it all goes well and I don't break it putting it on. Lifting the acrylic up into place was pretty straightforward. Uh, it's hard to see here, but I'm setting it on a base of a flexible adhesive so it's a nice bed that's going to help hold it in position as well as because it's flexible uh, the vibrations and temperature changes aren't going to crack that adhesive. Next thing I did was fill in all the gaps between the uh, wood and the acrylic with silicone and this was just so that there's no open air gaps, helps with waterproofing as well as vibrations. Next, I'm going to place these pieces of wood on the sides to help sandwich the acrylic piece together 
as well as cover up those gaps we just filled with silicone. So today is a painting day. Hopefully it's my last painting day. I've got three layers on the sides and only one or two on the top. First I gotta grind and sand down these edges, get them all smooth, cock it, and then paint. And then I realized I made this spot. Um, this is gonna pool water, which isn't good even if it is waterproof. So I'm gonna have to fill this in with some wood. But before I do, I just wanna show you the seams. This is the kind of quality I'm looking for in all my seams. Good bead of caulking and then a couple layers of paint. And then all these seams are also redundantly caulked from the inside. So just in case anything happens, something breaks or something leaks, there should be a redundancy that prevents anything catastrophic from happening. So I'm doing the same as all the other edges that I've done. Um, sealing the seam with caulking as well as rubbing the caulking into the end grain because that's where you're going to have the most water problems, your end grains. So I messed up when I did the top. Um, I was lazy, I was kind of in a hurry, I didn't do a good job waterproofing it. And for the most part, it was fine. Um, when I was on flat ground, it was fine, but at work, I park on a slant, and because of the slant, I'd get all the water on one side, and I'd get a leak. So today, I pull, I'm gonna pull it all off and do it correctly. Initially, I just used a basic silicone product for that seam between the wood edge and the acrylic. But I found that that didn't stick very well to the acrylic. And when water would get pushed to the edge, sometimes it would seep underneath. So what I'm doing here now instead is chemically welding on an additional acrylic rod so that when water gets pushed to the edge of the van, it just gets pushed down the van instead of trying to make it more. It may be hard to see, but I've got that acrylic rod welded to the edge of the acrylic and then between that rod and the wood is a marine grade adhesive sealant. And right here where my thumb is, is that opening that's full of the marine caulking that's allowing the whole acrylic to expand and contract but still keep that seal. This is the view from the inside. You can tell it's not the prettiest, but it does the job well. Now, whenever it is parked on a hill, the water goes to the edge and runs down the acrylic rod and no moisture gets into the van itself. And I haven't had any issues with it ever since I switched to the good marine grade product. To finish this video off, I just wanted to show you my install of my solar panel and my roof vent. It's a 100 watt solar panel that I'm putting up on the roof. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Drill some small holes and then use caulking again to make sure that there's no leaks. I then bolted the solar panel to the roof and then waterproofed all those bolts. Next thing to do is the roof vent. And for that, I just simply drilled a couple holes and then used the jigsaw to cut out the hole for it. I sandwiched a bunch of waterproofing between the roof vent and the roof. And then I placed it and screwed it all down. And then it's not videoed here, but I used lap sealant to seal all the edges. And I've had zero issues with it. So that's going to conclude my part two of making this awesome roof. Um, I still got a little bit of cosmetic things to do, like I said, but I'm very happy with the final product. I made some changes. I had some issues at the start. Uh, with those leaks at the beginning, what would happen was water would get in somewhere up here, and then because of the internal uh, caulking, the water would flow down this way. So I wouldn't notice anything up here. There'd be no damage and then they'd leak just right in right there at the very back. So I actually replaced the back panel once because it got a little bit of water damage. So it's got a brand new back panel and I haven't had any of those issues since I switched to the awesome marine adhesive stuff. But yeah, I'm very happy with it. I'm now confident that it's not gonna leak and I'm confident that it's strong. So I'm, it's, when I started this project, I wasn't too sure what I was getting myself into but i'm very happy that i stuck with it and yeah it's i don't think i've seen anyone else do something like this so it's kind of one of a kind and i'm really happy with how it turned out hopefully you guys enjoyed the video still got some small things to finish up on this van but it's coming together and i'll get a full tour of the van hopefully next couple of weeks yeah it will be i'll be coming out with a lot more videos quicker now that i'm done with firefighting for the year Anyway, have a great one. See you guys soon.